Now let's take a look at our O'Reilly starting grid for this A main feature of the 15th O'Reilly Chili Bowl National. On the point, it'll be Jay Drake and his teammate Sammy Swindell, then the young Aaron Fike, J.J. Yelly, and then in row number three, Tony Elliott, Jerry Coons Jr. Then it's Shane Cottle, Paul McMahon. Then it's Ted Hines, 39 years old, making his first Chili Bowl final. Matt Westfall will line up alongside and it's Randy Cook and Keith Roush rounding out row number six. Donnie Beachler, Michael Lang in row seven. Then it's Danny Lasoski, Kevin Doty. He is starting his uh, 12th Chili Bowl A main. Travis Minet, Casey Kane, Dave Darlin, Rich Canfield, Barry Reed, Steve Knepper, Wayne Chin, and Chad Farmer. All eight of those guys transferred out. And one addition. We talked about a 24 car field. Well, a special provisional was made for the car of Jason Left Best. Drake, Swindell, and Weir Green at the Chili Bowl. Jay Drake did exactly what he wanted to do. He got out as a lead. And you can see Sammy Swindell pushed the front end again, trying to get back down to the inside. They cut off a couple cars. And Sammy drops back to third. Aaron Fikes is really all over Jay Drake. Well, you can tell a lot of guys having some trouble out there. This racetrack's a little bit wet. You've really got to get in the corner very, very hard in order to get the back end out. And it looks like Aaron Fike, right at this point, has the fastest race car up there in front of the pack. And he has taken over the race lead from Jay Drake. Whoa, getting way high there is the middle groove. He's trying to lay some path through there. And Drake, then Swindell. Behind him is Elliott, then J.J. Yelly, and then McMahon. Yeah, but what's going to happen is this racetrack wears on as the, oh, we got a car that spun out. The yellow flag is out. But as the racetrack wears on and it gets slicker, these guys that are pushing the front end now are going to be tight enough to have a good run later on. Wayne Chin from Tip City, Ohio is our first caution here. Without your top five. And boy, Fike gets a great start. He certainly did get a jump on those guys. And once again, those two red cars, both those Keith Coon cars, pushed the front end. Those guys had to get hard on the brake. Cost them a lot of lap time. But all they can hope for is that this racetrack really slicks out in a hurry. Watching all this action up front, we can tell you that uh, Jason Leffler has moved from 25th to 16th, and there he is. Now this man just announced that he is going to go racing in 2002 for Chip Ganassi in the Winston Cup Series, but word is that Joe Gibbs found out about it through the grapevine and was not too thrilled, and there may be some shaking going on in his bush ride for this year. So he's got a lot of potential problems uh, facing him, but right now he's focusing on one thing, and that is to keep getting past. exactly at the same time we didn't see what started darlins but man that's donnie beach that stopped back there in the back so simultaneous rollovers i mean if it was synchronized swimming they'd get a perfect score unfortunately all they get is a trip back to the pits and you can see darlin he knows his day is done he got out of there the right front uh, tire and wheel gone off of that car jason leffler also crawling out of his cars he took a very hard flip when he got over that car and, and pulls away again as the cushion's starting to move up. And Fike really has the car dialed in here early, but will it hold up through 50 laps? Well, it looks like uh, Jay Drake's car is getting handled a little bit better, although you can see right there he got on the brakes and threw that car into the corner just to make sure that it turned. Those guys really have to toss those cars in there sideways to make sure they don't push the front end. Uh-oh. Guys climbing all over each other, but uh, no harm, no foul. We'll keep back to green flag. Swindell trying to catch up to his uh, teammate, Jay Drake. Yeah, and uh, believe me, Jay Drake's glad he's in front of him. He thinks it's going to be easier to catch uh, Aaron Fike and pass him than it ever would be Sammy Swindell. Meanwhile, look at, look at Aaron Fike up in front of these guys. Look at Sammy carry the front end. Well, he's got that thing hooked up pretty tight. That's the problem right now. It's too tight. And he's having to really be careful or else he's going to get that thing uh, pushing the front end. And Tony Elliott's now coming up. Looks like his car's working a little better. Tony Elliott right behind him there as he is going to be uh, changing his place.
plans for 2001. Elliott, in fact, will be running with Sammy on some selected uh, about 25 to 30 World of Outlaw dates this year. Right now, Elliott wants to show him his back bumper and take over the third spot. J.J. Yaley, meanwhile, moving up on Tony Elliott. So those three cars in a pretty good battle right now. But you can tell the way they're lifting those left front off and the front end's coming off the ground. These guys really got those cars set up for a much slicker racetrack than it is out there right now. Well, we have 15 laps down, 35 to go. There's Casey Kane and uh, Beachler as they're duking it out for the 15th position. Yeah, Beachler's come back up a long way after, uh, after that spin, or after that stop, really. He didn't spin, he stopped at the racetrack. And there's Cook, who was involved in that crash, and left got upside down. And Beachler has gotten around Randy, taken over the spot, so move Beachler up to 14. Westfall in the 54, and then we're in the 55 car right in front of him, and he seems to be fast enough now that he can just find a place on the racetrack to get by him. It's Ted Hines and Shane Connell, and Ted Hines in the 84 car, the white car, Shane Connell in the 86 car. He's one of those cars we saw kind of bang into a get together just a few minutes ago. Back to Tony Elliott as he is currently uh, slipping back a little bit. He has fallen back to the eighth position, and the yellow has come out once again. And it's for Casey Kane. A uh, tough break for Casey Kane. He had come a long way from that. Uh, his race car up, and it's been a big advantage for him as he's picked off guys, a lot of guys. And now that he's going to pick off one of the hardest guys to pass in racing, and that's Sammy Swindell. Yeah, like these two haven't gone at it a few times uh, over the past few years together in the world of outlaws. Exactly. And you can see Sammy, he's still fighting that push there. Oops. I thought he was pushing the front end. He was just trying to miss a wreck. So that's down in turn number two. We've got a couple of cars that have spun it around. and uh, That's Rich Camfield and Manet, who uh, both uh, transferred through the B race, uh, got together and uh, both stopped on the racetrack. And Farmer's off on the infield portion as well. So three, as again, he gets a great restart as we're back to green flag racing on lap 23. Well, it's going to be interesting to see as he pulls away from uh, Jay Drake ever so slightly. But Danny Lasoski back there in that four spot, it doesn't look like he's got quite the advantage he had earlier because he's not uh, really bumping on the back end of uh, Sammy Swindell. Two more laps, and uh, at the halfway point, there's a $1,000 bonus to the race leader, and that is from Weld Racing, and it looks like it could be Aaron Fike picking up an extra grand. This time by, we'll be halfway. Well, he's certainly got that race car hooked up. It looks like he's got the racetrack figured out. Back in the fifth spot now is uh, Roush. He has moved up ahead of J.J. Yaley. Keith Roush doing a nice job. He's a Colorado boy. He runs out there most of the time. Don't hear a lot about him anywhere else in the country, but he has been fast. And look at this. Jay Drake gets inside of the uh, fight. So the track is starting to change, and the 67 car is starting to dial in. Well, like I said, as the racetrack gets slicker, some of those guys that were pushing the front end earlier, they're going to be faster. If it gets really, really slick, I think that's when uh, Sammy Swindell is going to shine. Right now, Jay Drake takes over the race lead at lap number 28. So for the first 28 laps, it was Aaron Fike on the point. Boy, he is carrying that front end. Yeah, Fike's running. He's still trying to run way out in the cushion, or actually above the cushion in some instances. But uh, right now, uh, Jay Drake is moving right down to the inside of the racetrack. And that seems to really suit his race car at this point. Pretty soon, they're going to be catching up to uh, Travis Minier as uh, they're going to be getting into lap traffic here. Now that Lasoski's moved to the top, and when he does, Keith Roush takes advantage and goes around him. Roush, sort of running that midline, can't keep it on the bottom. Lasoski, there he nails it down low. Yeah, he's been, he's been running in. If he, doesn't, if he gets in a little too hard, he slides up a little bit. But now that we're going to see... Oh, uh, that's really a break for Jay Drake. The yellow flag comes out just as he was getting into lap traffic, and that's Tony Elliott. Oh, tough break for tough. Tony Elliott. You're absolutely right. It is a tough break because Tony had gotten all the way up to fourth. He was running in. Back to green flag racing here at the Chili Bowl Nationals. Jay Drake in that stealth chassis, a Maxim chassis for Aaron Fike in second place, and then another stealth with uh, the number one of Sammy Swindell. Yeah, Swindell now looks like he's finally got that race car works working a little better not pushing the front end like it was earlier and he's still trying to work that bottom group which seems to be about the fastest way around right now and lasoski's right on his back bumper following that race line we talked about the chassis 38 different chassis combinations 33 different motors yes stealth is the most prominent chassis here and the gurney engine is the most prominent engine here at this uh out of these 189 entries 
His car just isn't as good looking as it was Friday night. He could run anywhere on the racetrack when he won that uh, feature event on Friday, but the Sammy right now still trying to work it in. Yeah, I, don't, I think he just missed the setup a little bit. He tried to get that thing really tight. He thought it was going to be slicker than it is, and because it's so tight, he just can't run any place but right down there in that black stuff on the inside of the racetrack. This is the best battle we've got going on the track. Jay Drake has opened up about a 10 car length lead over second place, Aaron Fight. And there is a Roush coming into place on, on this uh, action as well. Yeah, Roush has been right on the bumper of Lasowski. Lasowski has been trying to get around Swindell. They've been doing this, and now then they're catching Fike, who's really bouncing around, not going quite as fast on that top group as he was earlier. And Sammy Swindell, the old veteran, started to pay off as the track is coming to him, and Aaron Fike, the rocket ship in the early going, is starting to slide up higher and higher, and everybody going underneath. Yeah, it looks like Lasowski. He likes a little higher bit of uh, groove than right on the bottom. He's been running right on the bottom most of the time. But now that he goes right back to the bottom, he gets around five. So Lasowski moves Fike back uh, another spot with Fike in fourth, Lasowski up to third. And here comes Roush. He's going to try and stay on the low side as well. Yeah, it looks like he's not working quite as well as he was earlier. But uh, Aaron Fike uh, really running good on that top groove, just not quite as fast as the bottom groove is right now. Five laps to go this time by Jay Drake, Sammy Swindell. They're running one, two. Then it's Lasowski, Fike, and Roush. There's your race leader. He started on the pole, and now he's coming into traffic, and this is when things can really get hairy at the Chili Bowl. Ah, uh, well, again, he lucks out. Looks like Donnie Beatsworth got together with somebody. And Looks like uh, Yaley. It is, and uh, Yaley was up to the eighth spot, and Beachler had moved up to the 11th after, remember, Beachler started. I don't think anybody's going to get around him unless they find a trick in the bag somewhere. And I need to correct myself. We'll restart on lap 46 as they went back one more than I thought we would. And it is Jay Drake. He's got about, oh, five, six car lengths now on Sammy Swindell. And yeah. Lasowski still underneath. Yeah, Sammy's just not working quite as good as Jay Drake is. Lasowski almost got by. But now then, Mike also running that top groove, and he's trying to come back and uh, pass these guys. Let's go. Boy, he hit that cushion pretty hard that time. Got the front end way up in the air. Three laps to go at the 15th running of the O'Reilly Chili Bowl Nationals. Is it going to be Jay Drake, Sammy Swindell, Lasowski, Fike? Well, two laps to go, and it looks like Jay Drake did some things well in hand. I'm sure Sammy would like to see him put somebody else in that car next year. He didn't want to have competition like that for a teammate. A little bit further back, you can see the action. Kevin Doty, white flag out. Nobody's going to touch him unless Drake has a major problem. It's his race. Uh, Lasowski got up there. He tried to get around Sammy on the outside. Do it. It looks like he's going to have to settle for third. Here comes your winner, Jim Drake. No. For second, Lasowski looked like he did get it at the strike. Sam wow. Wendell, Aaron Roush, that's your top five. Wow. I haven't seen very many people ever pass Sammy Swindell at this racetrack. And somehow Danny Lasowski managed to do it. After I messed up down in turns one and two, he came back in three and four and somehow got around Sammy Swindell. Well, I'll tell you what, he ran his best lap uh, in about the last dozen. In fact, he ran the quickest lap of the field at 12.4 seconds on that last lap, so he saved the best when he needed it. Jay Drake also did as he pulls away after the final restart to beat Danny Lasowski and Sammy Swindell to take the 15th O'Reilly Chili Bowl National. Well, he's got to be very, very happy. Let's take a look at this finish for a second. Lasowski just got a great run on the outside. Sammy got a little loose. And, man, he just went around him. Only beat him by about uh, two feet. But two feet's as good as anything here. Not only did he pass him, he passed him on the outside. We're going to talk to our winner in victory lane when we come back to Tulsa. Stay with us.